Bonjour et bienvenue à Objectif Chine. Le 1er juillet 1997 a marqué un tournant important dans l'histoire de Hong Kong puisque les Britanniques l'ont alors rétrocédé à la Chine. Certains ont alors craint que la rétrocession ne nuise à l'économie locale. Des Britanniques et même des gens originaires de Hong Kong ont quitté leur foyer pour s'installer à l'étranger. Cependant, d'autres Britanniques ont décidé de rester et d'unir leur destinée à celle de Hong Kong. Dans ce programme, nous allons voir ensemble à quoi ressemble la vie de ces gens dix ans après la rétrocession. Christopher Hammerbeck est à la tête de la Chambre de commerce britannique de Hong Kong, mais il a aussi un autre titre, celui de brigadier général. Il y a 15 ans, il était vice-commandant des forces britanniques à Hong Kong. C'est lui qui a supervisé l'opération de retrait des troupes britanniques. Hammerbeck a passé la majeure partie de sa vie dans l'armée britannique. Aujourd'hui, par son travail, Christopher Hammerbeck favorise les échanges économiques entre la Grande-Bretagne et Hong Kong. That work which I and colleagues in the chamber had been doing to recognize that trade will continue long after governmental spats. Depuis la rétrocession, les échanges commerciaux ont augmenté et Christopher Hammerbeck affirme que Hong Kong continue d'attirer les investisseurs. Beaucoup d'entre eux viennent pour la qualité de vie. Le fait est que continue à être un endroit très sécurisé dans lequel vivre. Hey, où dans le monde vous allez vous permettre vos filles de sortir, seules, à la nuit, en allant à votre appartement an area that is the nightclub center of Hong Kong. I mean, walking back uh, from friends and then walking back through Wan Chai Zone. I used to live up in Kennedy Road, knowing that they'll be totally safe. I know of nowhere else in the world that's as safe and pleasant as this. I, I know of nowhere else. I mean, I, you know, at its most uh, obtuse is, uh, you know, buying a second-hand motor car here. Everybody from the dealer through to the finance house to the insurer, right the way down to the government office that issues the license, wants you to have that car on the road today. It's unique. It's a unique characteristic. It doesn't happen in China. It doesn't happen in London. And it doesn't happen certainly in New York. And that sort of immediacy is an incredible advantage that Hong Kong has. Christopher Hammerbeck affirme que Hong Kong est l'une des villes les plus sûres du monde. C'est l'une des principales raisons pour lesquelles la ville attire autant d'investissements étrangers. Dix ans après la rétrocession, les Britanniques continuent de jouer un rôle important dans les forces de police de Hong Kong. Michael Dowie a intégré les forces de police de Hong Kong en 1972. Aujourd'hui, il est directeur du département de gestion. Même si ses responsabilités ont changé depuis 1997, il affirme que la rétrocession n'a pas modifié l'organisation des forces de police. Changeover has uh, worked pretty seamlessly, as far as I'm concerned, and as the police force is concerned. I'm still working with the same people that I worked with uh, before 1997, and so policing has crossed the um, crossed the boundary between um, before the handover and after the handover. And we've got full ranges of, of equipment. You see up there, that's how we pay for quite a bit of it. We have to get donations for, for the bakery. Les forces de police de Hong Kong emploient 27 000 personnes. C'est l'un des corps de police métropolitains les plus importants de la planète. Je suis visité la Chine beaucoup, 
prior to the handover. And during my meetings and visits to China, I saw many changes taking place, many exciting things happening. And I felt that um, the handover was going to be an exciting period for Hong Kong, and that after the handover, Hong Kong would continue to be an exciting, an exciting place to, to live. Additionally, my wife indicated that she was quite happy to stay in Hong Kong after 1997, and so we made that, uh, we made that decision. Yes, I mean, only a couple of months ago, one of my um, British colleagues turned around to me and said, Oh, sir, we're ten years, almost ten years after the handover. Who would have believed that the British officers would still be treated as well as they are treated? Uh, who would have believed that we would still be getting um, promotion chances, going on courses, visiting the mainland on, on official duty visits? Um, he, he said that he personally was a bit doubtful um, after the handover. He thought that maybe the British officers might not be so well treated, but uh, it's the opposite. Um, the British officers have continued to be um, treated equally, uh, in my view equally, um, with our um, local officers. We have a very strong discipline code and um, we strive for high levels of police integrity to ensure that our officers give the best service to the public and they give it honestly without favouring any particular party. Les forces de police de Hong Kong ont été mises sur pied en 1844. Dix ans après la rétrocession, elles continuent de rivaliser avec les meilleures forces de police de la planète. En qualité de directeur général de Invest Hong Kong, Mike Rose essaye d'attirer à Hong Kong des hommes d'affaires et leurs compagnies. Mais il est sans doute plus connu pour ses liens avec certains personnages de dessins animés célèbres. C'est lui, en effet, qui a convaincu Disney d'ouvrir un parc d'attractions à Hong Kong. Disneyland a ouvert ses portes en 2005 et la presse locale a surmené Michael Rose, Mickey Mouse. Le parc Disneyland n'est que l'un des nombreux investissements que Michael Rose a attiré à Hong Kong après la rétrocession. Doté d'un bon sens de l'humour, Mike Rose a décoré son bureau avec des caricatures à connotation politique. Souvent, le matin, il prend quelques minutes pour chanter ses airs préférés. Some people in society and some people, especially in the civil service, some people saw 1997 as the end of the road and they were determined to get out, either to emigrate or retire or whatever and be gone. And some of us saw this as a huge historical uh, event and we wanted to be part of it. And we wanted to be part of making Hong Kong as successful in the future or even more successful. quite common would do eight or nine business meetings in a day hmm. and I had a friend who uh, was used to this pace and he went back to the UK yeah. and when he had two business meetings in a day he was criticized by his colleagues <laughs> well, you're a workaholic you know what are you doing one in the morning and one in the afternoon way well, yeah way too much yeah. and uh, he had a lot of trouble adjusting down mm. his, his speed and what's changed I think is that we now have far more autonomy <laughs> Under, China, under Chinese administration than we had before. This idea of daily telegrams back between Hong Kong and Beijing to receive the instructions on what to do, this doesn't happen. It's Hong Kong people ruling Hong Kong. One summer holiday, I went to Britain and I didn't feel I was going home. 
I felt I was visiting and at the end of the holiday when I checked in at the airport to go back to Hong Kong that was going home then inside my head it had happened I was a salesman for Hong Kong and but I carried a British passport so I'm going all over the world saying Hong Kong is a terrific place I've lived there for many years it's a wonderful place to do business please come to Hong Kong and do business but I've got a British passport and I wanted to carry a Hong Kong passport Michael Rose est le premier fonctionnaire étranger dans l'histoire de Hong Kong à avoir été naturalisé chinois. En 1997, Charles Godard était journaliste. Pour lui, la rétrocession était un événement intéressant à couvrir. Le transfert de souveraineté dont Hong Kong était l'objet était l'un des événements majeurs de la planète. Beaucoup de reporters partageaient l'enthousiasme de Charles Godard. Charles Godard travaille maintenant pour l'Economist Intelligence Unit. Il effectue des analyses pour des multinationales. Avant, il réalisait des documentaires. Very interesting time to be a journalist in Hong Kong and also a time of some some uncertainty actually because it was unclear to us what Hong Kong would become after the handover um, and there were a, a quite a number of journalists who felt that Um, you know, the uh, freedom of expression, particularly that we enjoyed before the handover, might not continue beyond the handover. There were some fears that that might not happen. There were fears that the lifestyle and the, um, the quality of life that people had here may change after the handover. So there were certainly some concerns. Um, I think in, if you were an outsider coming back to China, looking back to Hong Kong now after 10 years of being away, um, uh, I, I think you would probably not really notice any significant differences between Hong Kong now and the Hong Kong that was there then. Of course, if you're an insider, it makes it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. I think you will notice certain changes that have taken place in here. Some of them very positive, I think. From my own personal perspective, well, Hong Kong, you know, has become a more. It's it's always an exciting city, and I, I have to say, I love the city for its sheer dynamism. I feel privileged because it's, it's been a tremendous ride for me. I've had a lot of opportunities in a city uh, that um, has, uh, has thrown up a lot of interesting work for me and that sits in a very special place in the region um, because it's right at the center of everybody's air routes. It's at the center of the information uh, highway in the region. It's um, a comp, it's, it's uh, at a confluence point which is very exciting for a journalist like myself. Nous avons discuté avec un expatrié britannique à Stanley, une ville qui se situe au sud-est de l'île de Hong Kong. You've got everything else that you need, uh, even if you're a sportsman. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a sports coach. You've got tennis, you've got football, you've got rugby, you've got cricket, you've got everything you want here as far as sports go, and you've got the social life to go with it because everyone wants to have a beer and have, a, have fun at the end. I love the mid levels area because you've got all of the bars and the restaurants, but then you can take two streets back and be in the middle of what feels like very authentic Hong Kong. So basically, you can kind of have a bit of the old and a bit of the new. Um, and uh, there's all these wonderful little temples down different little streets and things, so you feel like you can get a bit of the culture as well as having a contemporary lifestyle too. Colum Bancroft dirige Interior Enhancement Limited, une société de designers basée en Hong Kong. Il a travaillé comme comptable pendant 10 ans avant de mettre sur pied sa propre compagnie. Hong Kong had some difficult years with the, you know, between 98 and, and 2003, but that was, you know, an economic cycle more than anything else. I don't think it had to do with the, the handover per se. I think it was just, you know, it, it was, it, you know, sort of a, a downturn. But um, no, I think in recent years Hong Kong has been on the up and up, and it's, it's. it's It feels pretty much the same as it did in, um, in the mid-90s when things are good, property prices were going up and you know, the general mood is a good one. La compagnie de Colum Bancroft vend du matériel de construction à des clients du monde entier. We now have the, the expertise has been transferred now to our, you know, to our Chinese workers mm. at the factory. A lot of the expertise, not all of it, but a lot of it has. And so, you know, we're... 
much more competitive than we were at the beginning, and but uh, we managed to maintain the quality. So it's uh, yeah, so uh, our company's looking in good shape at the moment. We had to I never had any regrets that I didn't return to the UK. No, no, I didn't have regrets. And as things have developed and our, our business has grown, um, you know, that, those, that belief has been, you know, has been justified. So our modelers um, uh, prepared the, the model, then the mold was made from that, from which the casts were produced. Uh, installation work then took place on site, so these would come to the site in, in, in lengths of about two meters. As you can see, it was done by our company. Colum Bancroft a vendu des plafonds moulés au club de cricket de Colum et s'est occupé de la décoration intérieure. Au moment de la rétrocession, beaucoup de gens prévoyaient que la ville allait progressivement sombrer dans une période de déclin. Pourtant, Steve Vickers a fondé une compagnie, la International Risk Limited. Dix ans après la rétrocession, l'entreprise qui travaille dans le domaine de l'analyse de risque est prospère. Steve Vickers a déménagé Hong Kong en 1974 pour intégrer les forces de police de la ville. Il ne regrette pas d'être resté après la rétrocession. Uh, I And my assessment was, yes, things would be different, but probably interesting, challenging, and exciting. So for all of those reasons, I made a decision to stay and, and to continue to do business here. And in fact, to make Hong Kong uh, our, comp our corporate headquarters from which to, to attack the Asian market. I believe in Hong Kong, I believe in the system, I believe in the people. Hong Kong people are very resilient, very flexible people who have lived through many different uh, circumstances. They are amongst the most pragmatic people you will meet on the planet. So uh, I, I thought that Beijing basically had goodwill towards Hong Kong and wanted it to succeed. But I think I'm a Hong Konger now, so at the recent Rugby Sevens, Uh, if Hong Kong played England, I would hope that Hong Kong would win, but nationally, I'm always an Englishman. That would be my... <laughs> that's how I would describe myself, yeah. Le Festival des Arts de Hong Kong attire une foule bigarrée. Les artistes du monde entier viennent se produire ici. La protection des droits de propriété intellectuelle est la clé de voûte de la croissance de Hong Kong. Le siège social de plusieurs parmi les plus grandes compagnies du monde se trouve ici. Le département de la protection des droits de propriété intellectuelle a été mis sur pied par Stephen Silby. Stephen Selby travaille pour le gouvernement de Hong Kong depuis 1978. The date of 1997 Uh, bring up to date a lot of laws, particularly copyright and uh, digital media. Um, also, Hong Kong has to maintain a very competitive position in world trade. 
Stefan Selby a écrit des essais sur l'histoire et la culture chinoise et il est devenu un expert dans une ancienne discipline sportive chinoise, le tir à l'arc. I've been studying Chinese archery now for about 15 years. Um, I was aware from my studies as a student that archery was important in China, but only when I started a, a, a special study of my own. It was only at that time that I became to realize that it was a, an enormous influence on Chinese culture and that traditionally uh, China uh, had a, a, a lot of respect for archery. I could almost say it was the Chinese national sport il y a un proverbe chinois qui dit « une once de temps vaut une once d'or ». Eh bien, à Hong Kong, on pourrait presque dire qu'une once de terrain vaut une once d'or, et il est un homme qui semble avoir le don de tout transformer en or. Kes Griffiths a dessiné certains des plus célèbres édifices de la ville. Il dirige la quatrième plus grande firme d'architectes de la planète, dont le siège social est ici, à Hong Kong. La firme de Case Griffiths, Aedas, n'avait qu'un seul bureau dans les années 90. Depuis, Case Griffiths a agrandi son empire architectural en ouvrant des bureaux en Europe, en Asie et au Moyen-Orient. Presque 600 de ses employés travaillent ici à Hong Kong. And that's a whole team over there. Mm -hmm. Then we have a landscape team okay. and uh, a Middle East team over there. Here, okay. on this, this area of this floor, we have my team, which is sat over there, and mm -hmm. all the directors sit out in open plan. And <laughs> in 97, we had one office. Uh, now we have six offices in Asia. So actually, if you like, the, the, the handover Uh, allowed Hong Kong to become an international city. Mm -hmm. It allowed Hong Kong to become a capital city in Asia, a major city in Asia, alongside Shanghai and Beijing. And as a result of that, then we could start to become international architects. Yeah. Previously, we were sort of high bound by the sort of British mentality, but one, once 97 occurred, then we could expand at will. Mm -hmm. Aedas réserve un étage entier au projet qui concerne Macao. Les architectes de la firme dessinent des édifices destinés à des villes partout dans le monde. Okay. Okay. The structure has been worked out sure. and the client actually is looking for another site to put it on. Really? So The designs for China for um, Walmart stores and Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley and Walmart working in conjunction together. And some really, really interesting forms for a rollout of the. La firme de Case Griffiths a dessiné les plans pour des centres commerciaux partout en Chine, notamment l'édifice Princess dans le quartier central de Hong Kong. So the head, the Hong Kong Land logo, the square lights, different colors, the name of the streets. And then the stone, which comes out of Finland, so you get this this uh, branding so in Hong Kong land. land. This uh, next one here is Alexandra House, and this was the third one we did after Princess Coffee, where the name brands by now were actually we'll, we can move down this bit. And what we're dealing here with is an old building where people found it difficult to move around, yeah, yeah. so we softened everything. Okay. We cut a lot of diagonal lines, so you can see a footbridge over there, to a footbridge here, to a footbridge over there. So it was creating these vistas so people would know how to move around. We now enter the building from the other side, from the Lang Kwai Fong side. We have in Edinburgh Tower a 120-room uh, boutique hotel, high-end six-star boutique hotel. We have spa, restaurants, Harvey Nichols department store, all the name brands. So this has now become a real lifestyle retail center. 
Le quartier central de Hong Kong compte plusieurs boutiques de luxe. Il y a dix ans, seules quelques personnes fortunées pouvaient faire du shopping ici. Aujourd'hui, les Hongkongais et un nombre de plus en plus élevé de Chinois du continent peuvent s'offrir de ces articles griffés. L'économie locale a prospéré ces dernières années et pour certains Britanniques de Hong Kong, comme Griffiths, resté après 1997, a été une décision extrêmement profitable. What I see now is that Hong Kong has become the center, this global empire of architectural offices that we've set up, which is currently the fourth largest in the world. Next year will be the third largest, the year after the second, and we'll undoubtedly be the largest in the world within five years' time. So that's where the company is growing. We've got 1,800 people now. I reckon we'll have three or 4,000 people. And we will completely change the landscape en chinois, Hong Kong signifie le port parfumé. Dix ans après la rétrocession, la ville est encore plus prospère qu'avant. Le train de la mondialisation continue d'avancer et Hong Kong ouvre encore plus grand ses portes aux pays étrangers. Hong Kong est aujourd'hui une ville chinoise tout en continuant d'être une ville du monde. Merci d'avoir suivi Objectif Chine. N'hésitez pas à adresser vos commentaires et vos questions par email à l'adresse suivante objectifchine.com